and then the dark clouds rolled in and uh, if you can imagine 10 people on the road for four or five years playing endlessly touring having financial issues it's a pretty difficult time uh, for any band when they actually get to that point where it, you know the writing's on the wall it's not going to last much longer and uh, I remember distinctly having that that feeling that it was really time to time to go so the, we bought two Turagos and then we ended up with a two Turago situation um, which we saw pretty recently with UB40 arriving in separate limousines and not speaking to each other except on stage. We got into a situation like that. You, you should hear what the guys in the other bus are saying. I mean, do you, know, do you know what they said about you the other day, honestly? And so instead of all being together and sorting all this out, we ended up being very separate and we had very separate ways and separate ways of travelling. And these separate ways continued when we moved from bus travel to 100% um, plane travel by the end of it. Um, we'd play rarely and we'd fly there and we'd stay in luxury hotels. And it gradually fell to bits. We wore ourselves out, quite frankly. We took a break in mid-84 for about eight weeks, but during this break period was a period when the band should have consolidated and continued, actually gained momentum to promote the band because we were on a roller coaster. Unfortunately, I think we missed the wave. We'd burn ourselves out by that time, and I think everyone just got tired. After the break, the band had a bit of rejuvenation. Um, unfortunately, Martin left, and I think, for me personally, um, ended the band. So when I left, I'm not saying I broke up the band, but when I left, uh, it sort of caused the band pretty much to split along the fault line of the second Tarago situation. And um, Stewie and Ted and Mark um, left pretty soon after. And um, that was the end of that. It was very sad. It was one of the saddest things I can ever remember because it had been so much fun up to that point. Or rather, up to the point where it stopped being fun. Our, our whole thing was, we're a fun band, you know? Mm -hmm. We're not having much fun anymore because it's become uh, too much like hard work. It just gets a bit much after a while and you have to go on every night and have total fun in it. And working all the time has just killed the fun and the mm. spontaneity. Just when we thought we made it, um, in my opinion, everything was going just dandy. Um, we actually had time off. Um, we had a regular wage. From memory, Brett, Peter and Julie just basically said, oh, we're splitting up. So it's not like we're leaving. Um, it was a decision that was made um, by them, that we were splitting up. My first reaction was, sod you, I'm not splitting anywhere. Uh, you can leave um, and I'll challenge you for it. So if you want to leave and start your own band, that's great. Can't, can't do much about that. But as far as my life goes, I wanted to stay in control. Um, and that was taken away from me and I felt really, um, I felt emotionally gutted. Um, 1985 was a, yeah, one of those years that was get, getting a bit rough for us. Uh, a lot of things sort of going wrong. Uh, I do recall we um, broke up after having a rather heated meeting. And of course, I did what most people would do. I went and had a beer. It's the end of the all-nighters as you know it, or as anyone knows it, but it's the start of something much better. The all-nighters will be splitting into like two bands, more or less. I guess after the album, the initial, you know, hype from the album died down and we were back to touring relentlessly. I, I think we just got tired and burnt out. It was, uh, it was like we were working for the sake of working because we had to keep working to keep the money rolling in to keep the band on the road. It was a self-perpetuating. It was, and I remember that tour, I think it was 79, 79 gigs in 81 nights. Yeah, we, and in Australia that means going from Brisbane to Perth, and there's not a lot in between <laughs> except small towns. I think uh, we, we, we got to Perth, didn't we? It was when it really... Uh, we got tired. We were having health problems from the pressure and the... I think Claude, his wrists were 
he was having problems with his wrists, which is understandable considering we did so many gigs in that like years period. And I think, yeah, what happened, uh, we, we came back to Sydney and we decided to take a break. Take a break. We were, we were sort of cracking under the strain. And uh, I think by then also other musical influences were starting to make their way in, which causes a little bit of the cliche rock and roll problem of musical differences. I think that that's when that all happened, you know, and then Perry, I think, wanted to... Get a real job. He wanted to retire. Yes. And I think Marty left. All of those factors just tipped us over the edge, really. As, uh, as the song goes, it was too much pressure and we had to stop and rethink everything. And of course, that meant that it was hard to wind it back up once it stopped. And those musical differences then started to show. Even the hairstyles changed. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But I guess, you know, on reflection, these things happen with, with most bands, don't they? Well, think of every band in the world. They've all broken up. Usually, it's that same old problem. You know, you've got personalities. The personalities that are making it work are pretty sort of dynamic, but they can also then irritate and rub each other when you're spending more time with those guys than you are with your own family or friends. And I think what, then, I think we, from memory, you know, I'm, everybody's got a different memory of, of this part of the all-nighters, but I, my, from my memory, we all, we got back together to do a tour to, to sell the Turagos right. and sell the assets. do a final tour for everybody. Um, and we were going to finish our well, last big, show with a big bang at Martin Place, wasn't it? And it rained out, so we didn't... So we did <laughs> The all-nighters <laughs> ended with a whimper rather than a bang. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that, I guess that's what happened, really. Yes. Like Luna Park, it was just for fun, but in the end, there was a tragedy and uh, it closed down for a while. Yeah. To watch the all-nighters grow and watch myself grow in that was, it was pretty good too. To, to see from one level of a pub band to get up to where they did and to prove a lot to the Australian industry that they could actually do it and didn't need anyone's help because they didn't want to give it. They didn't understand it. It was too raw, it was too real. And, you know, I think with that, that scene and that sound, it, it, it's personal. You, you try and take it to the masses and people don't understand it unless you commercialise it. And I think you can commercialise it and then that, that loses a lot. You, you lose your realness, what it was all about in the beginning, really. And I think that happened in the end, towards the end, maybe. I guess we have to feel fortunate that by some twist of fate, we all ended up from different backgrounds at the Sussex Hotel and... We bumped into Marty, which was very fortunate because uh, we're, we sort of, like you said, we came from different places and we wouldn't have met each other if it wasn't for that. Without a doubt, totally different. Musical backgrounds were totally different. You know, I think I, when I came to the Sussex, I still had a, a bit of a fro from the disco era. I think that's what made the All Nighters work, was the, that we found a, a style of music that nobody except for Marty had a real background in, but we all discovered it and thought, this is fabulous. And, uh, Everyone brought their own perspective to it, and it seemed to work. It was kind of a little bit cabaret, a little bit punk, a little bit disco, a little bit soul, a bit everything. It was like a, like us, it was a mixed bag. We've got to feel fortunate. I mean, we've left, uh, well, we haven't left. <laughs> Thank God. We will never go away. We've, we've got a legacy, you know, there's, there's songs, there's friends. There's, enemies. There's friends. And more enemies. <laughs> We'll never be forgotten for all the right and wrong reasons. I guess so, but... Um, like a good soap opera, it just goes on and on. The story continues. It does. I guess we uh, better get to rehearsal then. The yes. boys are waiting. The boys are waiting and our public's waiting. Posterity's waiting. And Marty's waiting. <laughs> Speaking of posterities... Can you give me a lift of the boat? Yes, follow me. I'll be right behind you, said the uh, Irish bellboy. <laughs> Oh dear. So Montego Bay was very successful for us and we toured an awful, awful, awful lot 
and success and all the rest of it brings negative things into it from exhaustion, from partying too hard, from traveling constantly, from sharing things with people in such an intense level for so long. It bonds a lot of people, but it can also be quite soul destroying uh, for many, many, many reasons. Loneliness, you might be surrounded by a lot of people, but you can be very lonely in a situation like that, strangely enough. Uh, a lot of abuse, um, drug, alcohol, party, can um, cause a few cracks. It's fantastic fun, but it can also be incredibly exhausting. When you've got 10 people that are incredibly exhausted together and you've expected to produce more music, although you're not getting a day off to even rest, to scratch yourself, it's very hard to maintain, especially 10-piece band, when you have to work so hard just to keep the show on the road um, was hard enough. Um, let alone putting up with everybody's little intricacies and all the rest of it, it can be very difficult. I was, I'm certainly guilty of that. I think everybody is guilty of that in the band to some degree. But those of us who are wise enough to learn from the experience are all still good friends. And hopefully one day those of us that might still be a little bit funny about things might come to the party and realise that, you know, this. It's not a competition here, we just wanted to be friends and enjoy the experiences that we had together and get on with the future because there is a future here as well. It never ends. Yeah, I think that's pretty well how I want to say it. Yeah, that's fairly positive, isn't it? Are you proud? I think I've mentioned I'm proud ten times, Brett. <laughs>